It's finally here. The last installment of our little series on how to basically use non-linear editing software like Final Cut Pro to make a movie. We've given you the basics on how to import your footage and we've showed you what to do with your footage once you've imported it. We're using Final Cut Pro, but again, I stress that no matter what nonlinear editing software you're using, functionally, they're all pretty much the same. So don't freak out if you're using something different. Today, I'm gonna to take you through some very, very basic exporting procedures so that you can get your movie out of the computer and into the eyeballs of your family and friends. Okay, so check it out. You've finished cutting your amazing movie and here it is in the sequence with all the transitions and filters and the different layers and whatnot. All of the individual elements that make up your movie are here where they should be and they're in the right order and you've trimmed each shot just the right amount. And if you hit play, you can watch your project here in the canvas viewer. But that's the only place in the universe where your movie will play. Unless your grandma also has Final Cut Pro and you take all the project files on a hard drive to her house, she'll never be able to see your movie. So you're gonna have to get Final Cut Pro to spit out some kind of version of your movie that you'll be able to use outside of the program and share with your friends and your grandma. Final Cut Pro Studio comes with a bunch of other programs besides Final Cut that allow you to author a pretty slick looking DVD or compress and convert your footage into various formats. But if you're just looking to export a quick and easy QuickTime movie file out of Final Cut Pro, it can certainly do that for you. What you wanna do is go here under File and look for Export. And here's where you've got some options. If you're looking, for instance, to export a high quality, uncompressed version of your video using the same settings that you use to import it, then it couldn't be easier. Just click on Export QuickTime Movie. This basically spits out a self-contained QuickTime movie of your project with very little hassle. If you'd like, you can still make final adjustments to the broadcast standards and the sizes and choose an NTSC or PAL setting that works for you, but when you select Export QuickTime Movie, Current Settings is already selected. And if you don't understand any of the other options, then it's probably too advanced for you at this stage anyway, so don't worry about them. In any case, all you need to do is choose your destination folder and give your file a name and then hit save. Boom, Final Cut Pro is starting to render all your transitions and all your footage into one self-contained QuickTime movie file. You'll then be able to take that file into something like iDVD or even Toast and burn a disc to take to your grandma's house. But what you won't be able to do is email that file to somebody or even maybe upload it to YouTube. And that's because when you export a QuickTime movie from Final Cut Pro, the file you end up with is humongous. Exporting as a QuickTime movie gives you a high resolution, uncompressed master essentially, that you can then put on a DVD or Blu-ray or continue editing with if you want. But it's not very versatile in terms of online sharing. So what you'll likely want to do is export using QuickTime Conversion, which basically tells Final Cut Pro to compress your video into a more easily digestible size. If you go into the options, you'll see that you can adjust the various settings, including the compression type, which automatically defaults to your import and sequence settings anyway, so don't worry too much about that. Here you can adjust the quality of the output, keeping in mind that the lower the desired file size means the lower the quality of the video. Under size, you can adjust the dimensions of your video, you know, in terms of pixel width and height, and as you can see, you've got some HD options available for you as well. Just make sure that you choose a size that matches the proportions of the footage you've been working with. You can also adjust the audio sample rate and you've even got some options for faster loading, but if I were you, I wouldn't mess around with that stuff. We've never found much use for it. So there you go. Now you can basically import your stuff into Final Cut Pro, mess around with it a bit, and then export a file that you can share with your family and friends through Facebook or on a DVD or on YouTube. Clearly there's a ton of stuff that I've left out of this series. I'm not an idiot. I know that I've just glossed over things. But you know what? It's all stuff that you're gonna pick up on along the way anyhow. You just need access to the software and some time to make your mistakes and learn from them. So don't get discouraged if there's something specific that you wanna do but you don't know how to do it. Just keep at it. You know, use the help thing in your whatever software you're using or go online and do a search. Somebody somewhere I'm sure has figured it out. And if all else fails, 
Try and find a workaround that'll solve your problem. You know, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Have fun with it, no matter what program you're using. Thanks for watching our little series, and uh, have a very Merry Christmas holiday.